It's just um, allergy.
Good morning and happy Christmas. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of the Lord. Our celebrant is Father Michael Cardigan. Please join the choir in singing the entrance hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. This little boy, his name is Bonham, and he represents for us all the other children in the cathedral this morning, and not least a reminder to us that this morning we celebrate the birth of a child, the child Jesus. And this little boy, especially at this age, contains the vulnerability and the innocence of Jesus. So thank you, Bonham. Bye bye. <laughs> and that's the end of me being playing Daddy Christmas.
Good morning, everyone. On this special day, we welcome everybody, not least those of us who, like the three wise men, have come from far away, such as overseas. And we welcome those who have come home to visit their families. Because really, this time, this season, is one of family celebration of being together. Because it was into a family that Jesus was born. And we now belong to one family, the faith community of the cathedral. So let us turn around to each other and wish each other a happy Christmas. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thought and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most griffith fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In this great hymn of exhortation, at the return of the exiles from Babylon is also a poem of joy for our redemption. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, <laughs> announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people, he redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song is Psalm 98. The response is, all the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the power of God. song to the Lord, who has worked wonders, whose right hand and holy arm have brought salvation. has made known salvation, has shown justice to the nations, has remembered truth and love for the house of Israel. of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord of oh, the earth, ring out your joy.
psalms to the Lord with a harp, with a sound of music, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Acclaim the King, the Lord. The second reading is from the letter to the Hebrews. In this reading, we hear that the whole history of God's dealings with his people in the past was a preparation for the coming of his son at a particular moment in history. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken through us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you, or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Gospel acclamation. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. For today, a great light has come upon the earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In this Gospel this morning, St. John 
refers to Jesus as being the Word, the Word of God become flesh like us and made his dwelling among us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world, namely Jesus is the light. He was in the world and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son full of grace and truth. John, John the Baptist, testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. As you can see, unlike the wise men who came on their camel, this is my camel this morning. And we all have our own ways and reasons for coming this morning. And that's okay. But what unites us all at the end of the day we are here to celebrate with relief and gratitude that yes, the promises that were made in years gone by in the prophecies that a child would be born and would be called Emmanuel. And that's what we celebrate today, the fulfillment of those promises that Jesus, the Emmanuel, 
the Son of God has been born and is with us. Christmas time, like many special occasions, for some people, some people can be a lonely time. They're away from home. Or maybe there are other things in their life that are destroying any sense of inner peace. But I tell them, I urge them to be at peace because our God, the Word of God as in Jesus, has come to dwell in their hearts and in each of our hearts. That is what we celebrate. And in the celebrating, we ponder the meaning of that, that with the birth of this Jesus, the gap, the distance has been bridged because now our God is with us in the person of Jesus, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. We are no longer alone. We have someone who understands us and accepts us and encourages us, not least on those occasions when some people do not understand us and who may be bullying us and may be hurting us in varying ways. That has been a source of peace for me in years gone by when I was still in school, that the Lord knew the truth about me. So not to worry about what other people may think or say. Remember, the Lord is with us. We are no longer alone. And this morning, I invited that little boy, Bonham, to join us on the altar and take on the mantle of the image of Christ. Because it is well to remember that our God, unlike so many powers and authorities in our world, did not come to dominate us, to abuse us, to force us to do his will. He came in the vulnerability of a child as seen and that little boy Bonham to invite us. He invites us gently to receive his love, to rejoice in his presence. So often in our world, people in authority in businesses and companies and factories and whatever. They use their position to threaten, to bully their workers. Parents can be very authoritarian. But what we've been invited to do is to be like Jesus to take on his mantle of gentleness and love. Not to force or dominate anyone. And of course that includes all you married people as well. But to gently love and be present with people. We don't have to have any other agenda. Enough that in our own individual lives, we are growing in lovability. And all else will be looked after. Jesus never imposed himself on anyone. He was there and he responded to people's needs. I think it's probably truthful to say that nobody gets through life without being hurt 
in some way or another. And today we can rejoice with renewed hope that in this Jesus we have the heavenly healer who came to heal us, to renew our spirits so that we can rejoice again in our own worth, in who we are. Jesus came as an ordinary human baby, born of Mary, like every other baby that's born, and probably was crying when it was born. The Lord has broken into the world of ordinary happenings, situations, as in the birth of a child. The sacred breaks in to all the situations in our life. If we have just the eyes and heart of faith, we can sense the presence of God in one another and in the life situations. As St. Paul tells us, God works all things for the good of those who love him. And if the Lord and God himself has revealed himself, his love in the ordinary situation, of a newly born baby, the Lord is also pouring his love into our lives so that we in turn can radiate and let flow through us God's love for all people. But the central message, I believe, of Christmas is that God loves us, that God considers each one of us, regardless of who we are, young, old, or whatever, as being precious, that our God rejoices in each one of us, not least this Christmas day. And that is the invitation, if we are truly to celebrate the birth of Jesus this Christmas, we must let that inner presence of Christ in our hearts to flow out in loving concern for the weak, the troubled, the lonely of our society. Just as Jesus was referred to as the light of the world, pushing the darkness of fear and sinful, sinfulness away. We too are called to be the light of the world, to be the lamp on which God's love can flow to others. As I said, is not what's important, is not so much what we say or do, but are we in our individual lives growing into the mystery of God's love for us, being, which is freely given and offered to us? And this feast day like today highlights that gift of God's love for us, that God became one like us to be with us. That is the central message, God being with us, that he came to save us, to forgive us our failings. That when we stumble along the journey of life, he will pick us up, he will wipe our tears. Because remember, in Jesus, we find a person who was truly human, truly human in all that he said and did. 
you can imagine that this Jesus holds your hand when you stumble and wipes your tears away when you feel like crying because such was the nature of Jesus, truly human like us. And our gift to our God today and right through life is to continue to grow into our humanity as Jesus lived his humanity. We're told in St. John's Gospel that he is the vine, we are the branches. And if the branch stays connected to the vine, it will bear much fruit. And in our case, to the extent that we remain one with Jesus and allowing him a resting place in our hearts, then we will bear much fruit in the sense we will be life for ourselves and we will be life for others. Too often when we speak about our faith, we talk about a kind of an intellectual definition, something of the head, but our faith is all about our heart, a heart that we have in gratitude and trust entrusted to our God. Sometimes we can forget that the sacred, as I said, is, is not found in church, in saying our prayers, so to speak, as important as they are, don't let it be said, I said, don't pray, but rather in the ordinary little events of day-to-day -day life. The way you say good morning to your wife, the way you say hello to people that to whom you know or maybe do not know. We are the representatives of this Word of God, of this God who became man, human, like us. Let us be human. Let us be human. And the only model we follow is not something so much we get out of books, but rather in the person of Jesus that comes to us in the scriptures and in our silent moments of prayer. And we let the whisper of God to come in and the gentle touch of God's love to touch and to mold and to form our hearts. So I wish all of you the peace and the love of Christ this Christmas and good health for the new year. Amen. Please stand for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, <coughs> true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us man and our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save us. Let us pray to God with confidence for our needs, the needs of the church and of the world. The response to today's general intercessions is, Lord, let your salvation reach to the ends of the earth. For Christians, the, that Christ may fill their hearts with joy and make them heralds of his gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your, your salvation, salvation reach, reach to, the, to ends the ends of the earth. the earth. For all rulers, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may guide their feet into the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, let, let your, your salvation, salvation reach, reach to the ends, the ends of, of the, the earth. earth. For the sick and the lonely, that Christ, who shared our humanity, may inflame their heart with his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your us salvation reach, reach to the, the ends of the earth. the earth. For our families, that Christmas may find them united in peace and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your salvation, salvation reach to the ends of the earth. the earth. For those who are away from home this Christmas, that they may know they are not forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your, your salvation, salvation reach to the ends, the ends of, of the, the earth. earth. For the dead, whose absence is felt intensely at Christmas, that Christ may lead them into the joyful vision of his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your salvation, salvation reach to the ends, the ends of the earth. earth. For our own special needs this Christmas day, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, let, Lord, your, salvation let your salvation reach to the ends of the earth. God of love and mercy, may the coming of your Son among us confirm our faith in your love for us and deepen our love for you and for one another. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please join the choir in singing the offertory hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High.
please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for in the mystery of the Word made flesh a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind so that as we recognize in him God made visible we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. (laughs) 
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with each and every one of you. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Today's communion hymns are A Clear Benediction and Transiamus.
Before the final prayer, I'd like to say a few words, not least to thank the choir for their marvelous miracle of music and singing. I feel the gates of heaven have been opened a little bit more for us and for me. So thank you, members of the choir, for your beautiful voices and music and conducting. Please. And let us not forget the ordinary members, us, of the community here at Mass. We couldn't have had such a lovely, faith-filled celebration except for one another. So let's thank one another. Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born this day, is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join the choir in singing the recessional hymns, Joy to the World, and Hark the Herald Angels Sing.